still need can to I have earn. good food to makan or not? Can, can later we go makan. Mm. Okay, good food lah. Yeah, good food. I hope it's good lah. Mm, it's a good one. Because every day I like cook at home. I'm very sian already. Yeah, you know, thing. not. Then take care of Katie, I also very sian. But not sian lah. It's not really sian. It's like really popping. The origin of Singlish is a little bit difficult to pin down exactly how Singlish is formed. But one of the things that one need to think about is the fact that you have what we would consider the linguistic ecology of Singapore, which is made up of many different groups of people coming together right at the beginning after um, when you had migration. And what happened during that time is that you had four main groups of people, um, the Chinese, the Malays, the Indians, and also people from the UK who were the colonizers when they colonized Singapore. And all these people all needed to communicate on many different levels when they had to buy food, when they go to the market, and some kind of mixing happened. And when this mixing happened, you're talking about a mixing of many different languages coming together. And more and more often when people start using all these terms, um, this mixture resulted in a completely new language. So this new language is therefore comprised of elements of English, of Mandarin Chinese, of Hokkien, of Cantonese, of Malay, and that's what we know of as Singlish today. Uh, Singlish is actually a way to make me feel more comfortable when talking to a f closer friend. Uh, interaction with someone around us. It's a very valuable communication tool. Part of our Singaporean culture, a part of our Singapore identity. It brings solidarity between me and others. A very convenient and short-term form of our daily, our, our daily speeches. In colloquial usage, it is definitely something very valuable and it should be something documented and preserved and not discouraged by the government. I think in more recent years, people are starting to realise that Singlish is actually not bad English. It's just something different. So I think on the whole, things are changing. People are also using Singlish to make jokes, to have fun with, especially when you see um, TV programs and internet short clips that make use of Singlish uh, to make fun of Singaporeans or just make jokes about life in general. Um, there is something very nice and positive about it. Um, and even the government, I think, is changing perhaps changing its view on Singlish. Oh, with Jilin. No. Um, okay, he's firstly he's a Singaporean, so yeah, I must support local talent. Uh. Then next is, when I was very young, I think I was at primary school, then I first noticed him on some Taiwan variety show. It was some Zhong Yi Da Ge Da. Yeah, I know that one. Then they, then they introduced all the new singers then. Then, I, then after that, I heard that there was this guy in Singapore. I mean, this guy from Singapore. Then I was like, quite curious who this guy is. Uh. So I realized it was Gigi Lin, but I wasn't very interested in him during that time. So it, rather than producing a fluent speech, it sounded more like there were cuts in speeches. So they were saying, said a few words, breaking down. Said a few words again, breaking down. And... Yeah, I mean, that at times can be a bit hard to understand. You have to be a bit more focused when you're trying to listen. <clears throat> because the words are not really fluent. But they are like interrupting at points and there are jumps in between the conversation. So you how long do you think the haze will last? Wow, like that. Uh, I don't know right. Uh, now it's supposed to be the monsoon season, right? Yeah. But you know I don't know why the, the rain doesn't come still very hot also then I don't know, at least at least maybe two months later, right? Something like that. 
initially I had no idea what was going on. I didn't know if they're talking English or some other language. But after a while, after listening carefully, I was able to kind of get the idea. I think they were talking about the recent haze in Singapore and wearing N95 masks. And they're also talking about the uh, PSI level. But other than that, I couldn't figure out some of the words in between. It was almost as if they were speaking a different language. There was this words I had no idea and then, yeah, I got a bit lost in between. Uh, I'm very tired, leh. very hungry also. Leh. Hungry? Where you want to makan? Don't know. Leh. Singapore, where got place to got cook makan one? Wow, see very jealous. Every time I think of food, I also jealous. Think of food, also jealous. Think of sleep, also jealous. Wow, everything <laughs> so jealous in Singapore. <sighs> Poor thing, Bopian. Uh, why Bopian? Uh, can I have earn. good food to makan or not? Can, can later we go makan, okay? Mm. Good food, lah. Yeah, good food. I hope it's good, lah. Mm, it's a good one. Cause every day I like cook at home. I very sian already. Yeah, you know, thing. not. Then take care of Katie. I also very sian, but not sian, lah. It's not really sian. It's like really bopping. Bopping. Must do, but her. it's also not bopping, ni. <sighs> but happy to do it. Yeah, yeah lah. It, it sounded like. Uh, multitude of different languages and it was very difficult to follow the conversation because only recognized a few English words and I found it very difficult to understand. But it's a culture difference between like NTU and US like among students. I think for me the greatest difference apart from the friends is the food. Because the food there is significantly cheaper. Really? Like yeah. how much cheaper? Um, let's say a bowl of noodles, right? A bowl of noodles can cost like maybe two fifty or a bowl of laksa with like the laksa gravy, yong tau fu, that kind of $3 so plus max. So what's your favourite food there? Yong tau fu. Why? Because it's the Hawaii, is it? Like it's, it tastes style. very good eh. Like the yong tau fu, they a lot of awards eh. Yeah, then the ayam penya is the same as our can do eh. I think Singlish is um, sometimes confusing to understand and um, I feel that sometimes um, between a conversation, they speak very fast, and it's hard to follow along, and they use la a lot, um, and sometimes that throws me off, and I don't know um, exactly what's been said, but um, more or less, I can understand this English um, if I really listen. Foreigners who come to Singapore and hear Singlish, the first response is, oh my god, what are you talking about? Um, that is... There is very little in Singlish that they understand because I think part of the reason is because they think that they are listening to English but really they are not listening to English, it's Singlish. So it's a different language and people are puzzled like when you are an English speaker and you don't speak French and you hear French, you go, I don't understand French. So it's the same response, people come to Singapore and they say, I don't understand Singlish. The question really is, do we have more and more people using Singlish? I think the answer will be yes. More and more people will be likely to use Singlish because it's part of their identity of being Singaporean. And Singlish will change along the way. As with all languages, things will develop and um, there will be new things that will come into the language. There will be new grammar, new words, um, new pronunciation. So the Singlish that is going to happen that, that we may see 20 years later may actually be very different from the Singlish that we know today. And in fact, the Singlish that we know today could very much be different from the Singlish 50 years ago. So I feel that Singlish uh, is a mixture of a lot of languages and I feel that how foreigners can accept it is probably by understanding their culture. Culture is something that uh, is best learns when you really uh, go down to the ground and experience it for yourself um, and not uh, learning from say from the books or some reference materials so uh, what i would suggest for foreigners is that they can actually go down to the what we call, call the heartlands of singapore uh, probably the coffee the coffee shops um, the food courts or uh, the playgrounds uh, in the hdb estates youtube videos online whereby they make fun of Singlish and like even a lot of parodies so and like those Singlish tutorials. Integrate and mix into 
into the Singapore society, probably like going down to coffee shops, going down to markets, or just maybe walking, walking on the streets and being sensitive and being aware of how Singaporeans speak daily, how, how do Singaporeans communicate with each other. This is actually the best way to learn, best way to understand, and best way to pick up Singlish. It takes time for other people to actually accept us because it doesn't really happen in their country. They don't have a Singlish like what we have. We have a lot of like Hokkien's and mixtures of different languages. So uh, it's really have to be acceptant to it. Yeah, because we can't change on the spot.